I'll show you. I'll show you what my practice has gotten me. Nowhere. Do it again. They broke up their chain so miserably. Why? What's happening here? Assessment was right. They, like stacking willy nilly could get you a good four to six chain, but like you can't build off that. It might be shoal. It's potion. Let's time. get to work. What is that mess happening over there? What was that? What an easy win. Not happening. Learned fool, I thought you were. Get out of here. Rusty. I'm always a little Whoa. rusty when we start up the stream. Get 
Get out of here. Good afternoon, everybody. Happy Friday. It's good to see you all today. We're going to be playing some Final Fantasy 16 for about an hour and a half, and we're going to be doing a lot of side quests. Let's get started. Uh, for anyone who's not kept up with the storyline, uh, after shenanigans happened at uh, Did you see that? the desert, we ended up having to fight uh, Bahama, and well, that also gave us the opportunity to break the next mother crystal, and that also made it purple, more of our friends hurt. pinky purple, fuchsia. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry. Hey, Rusty. Welcome to the stream. Okay, let's give Bahamut a try. That's where I have to go, but do I want to go there? Not exactly. So we could go to the, each of the landmarks and start talking to the people we need to. Or we could start fighting things. Let's just fight things. Let's just fight. Let's fight bounties. Poor bastard. Couldn't run because of the weight of his load. Still, better a branded than one of us. My pickaxe, I would all oh, right. Banditry is, is rampant oh, across the world right now. Dynasty. Are you looking for something in particular? Thank you for your custom. The world's a little fuchsia -y. Ready, go. Yeah. Company. Be safe. Should give uh, Bahamut basically Bahamut stance a try. Give 
it a shot. thinking because like I don't I don't care for the wings of light base attack uh, I mostly really love the pile drive and the wind up but I've maxed these out so I can put them onto any setup uh, I don't use Ramu's base ability I have to think about what setup I want to make it right Phoenix's dash is one of the best I've ever used, so I'm going to keep that on there. Ten of clubs. Not a God's forsaken soul, eh? Only those who have enough to show them to your pockets. What a lot of fun!
yourself, Jill. I can't dodge for you. Sweet pap. A deserted turned out law. We were more similar than he knew. That's better. The part is old. Ooh, these monsters look messed up. Oh, they're Akashic, aren't they? An Akashic Devil Crab. Those Akashic Chocobos? Yeah, they are. I think we get a good look at how the sword looks in action. Pretty cool.
This is a happy birthday right here. It's a Merry Christmas because I hit three of them. That sweet, sweet renown. No more vengeance. No more war. Okay, so there are two S ranks available right now. But I probably should. I could wait a bit for that. Companion appears much more formidable than your uncle. Should I be worried? Uh, you haven't been introduced. Jill, Clive has told me much about you. All lies, I'm sure. Your stolas said that Dalamil has a bandit problem. Indeed. Although you're a little late. They left with our food and guild days ago. Any idea where they went? The desert's a big place. Your guess is as good as mine. But the fact is, I have more immediate concerns. What did you say to me? What did you say? Ah, as if by magic. Let's just say we've yet to reach a consensus about how to solve Dalimil's little problem. And at this rate, it won't be the actions of the bandits which prove to be our undoing. It will be our own. I've tried reasoning with the dissenting parties, but even the desert hare has limits. Perhaps we could talk to them. What makes you think they'll listen to us? What makes you think they won't? Huh. She makes a fair point, Sid. 
And you won't have wasted much of your precious time if you fail. They're just across the courtyard. Suppose we just follow the shouting. You wouldn't talk like that if it had been your men whose throats were slit. Blood for blood, it's the only way. We hire mercenaries and have them mount the bandits' heads on our walls as a lesson to the rest. And what happens when those mercenaries are slaughtered like your men? Are you going to hire more? We're better off using that coin to buy food and supplies. If we hire mercenaries, the only thing we're buying is the bandit's ire. And you cannot fill empty bellies with that. Do you hear me? But what happens when they come back? Maybe it'll be your throat that's slit. That's enough. Both of you. Any more of this, and I'll throw you out myself. Come back when you're ready to talk like adults. Ooh, savage. Victor. What's he doing here? Victor, a friend of Sid's and later Clive's, who keeps an ever attentive vigil on the comings and goings in Dalmechia from his hometown in Constance. Sid, and Lady Jill, what brings you here? I was about to ask you the same Violence. thing. Costness is in chaos. It's adult. And the markets have all but ceased to operate. The Briars kiss here in Dalamil. ...is the only place I can reliably obtain supplies. I was here to do just that... ...when Master Lubor told me of his troubles. He thought it I might be like able to talk some sense into these fools. But if you're here... ...I suppose his patience must be waning. Who are those people? Those were the thorns in Lubor's side. And the reason this place might be headed the same way as Kostnis. These are cursed skies. The darkness is enough to drive a man to madness. Or an entire city, for that matter. We're still working on the skies. But in the meantime, perhaps we can find a solution to Dalamil's problems. I hope so. For all our sakes. We had enough fighting. I know I bloody well have. So, you see my predicament? What I saw was a room full of people who were angry and afraid. And with good reason by the sound of it. But if left to smolder, that anger and fear could set the entire town alight. My thoughts exactly. Ugh, what to do? Both sides wish to protect their homes and livelihoods, if only they could agree on how. But as long as they are divided, we are vulnerable. And if there's one thing bandits like, it's an easy target. What would Sid the Outlaw suggest? Violence. Well... If it were my namesake... ...he'd let them choose for themselves... ...and be on hand to pick up the pieces when it all went wrong. That sounds like a recipe for disaster. <sighs> a recipe for disaster is precisely what it is. But... ...perhaps that realization... ...would be enough to make them question the ingredients. While it's plain neither Conrad nor Natalie will countenance the other's proposal, it may still be possible to make them doubt their own. Before presenting them with a third option. And that would be? To pool our resources and save the city ourselves. Why fight each other 
when all that fear and anger can be directed at the bandits. It appears we have a plan of action. Victor, pay Conrad a visit. See if you can't convince him of his folly. I'll speak with Natalie. As you wish. Hmm. Your faces are not well known in this town. That may prove useful. Don't worry. Victor and I will do most of the talking. You need only play along. I see. Play along. What he means to say is yes. Nice, everybody. The lady of the spear herself. Conrad, may I introduce you to Jane, commander of the Red Wings, the oldest mercenary guild in the Free Cities. A pleasure, my lady. The pleasure is all mine. As I told you, I summoned the commander here from Canberra to inquire about a contract. Victor says you told him no. That there aren't any men left to hire. Is that true? True as the crystals cracked. Nobles came and claimed every last one worth his salt. And not just from us Red Wings. You know of the seven high houses. There must be two score swords assigned each one. Granted, we have a few boys left. <laughs> if it's boys you're looking for. Well, she's leaning well, into that, like, that storyline. Are you saying that Dalamul's finest cannot defend this town better than a gaggle of unblooded striplings? That a band of beardless youths could better avenge the deaths of your brave men than you yourselves? Absolutely not. We'll show those bastards who they're dealing with. I see. I can't believe that actually worked. Conrad's not what you call the brightest candle in the crypt. And there's a reason why I had you do the talking and not Sid. Well played, my lady. Then let us band together and show these brutes that Dalamil is not to be trifled with. Yeah, she caught on immediately and just played along. My shop. If I had my pickaxe, I would... I mean, it may still be possible to buy something. And we may yet be allowed... Ah, here he is now. Natalie, allow me to introduce Lord Underhill of Randalar's prestigious League of Merchants. Uh, Lord Underhill. At your service. Underhill. I was just telling the good lady of our conversation, my lord, and how you were lamenting the state of the capital stores. Lubor says that not only are the granaries almost empty, but that war and the blight mean this season's harvest won't be enough to fill them for winter. Indeed, certainly that is the case. The nobles in the capital are buying up the city's stocks of barley and wine driving the prices higher than most commoners can afford it is only a matter of time before the peasants revolt <clears throat> it is worse than i thought if what lord underhill says is true i that. fear we have little hope of supplementing our stores meager though they regrettably are and while I applaud your endeavors to dissuade our more bellicose citizens from seeking vengeance, I sense Conrad is not wrong in his assessment of the bandit's likely return. Which means that myself. now, uh, more than ever, don't we will need to secure what themselves? little we still have. Food, weapons, herbs, everything. If our humble town is to endure not only this hardship, but those that are certain to follow, we must stand united. All right. If it will help to protect my home, I'll do it. But you needn't have gone through this charade. Th 
Thank you, Clive. Your performance was nothing if not workmanlike. She saw right through it. I didn't say it was good, merely that it produced the desired effect. Now, my scouts should be returning shortly. Meet me back at the Briar's Kiss, and we shall see what we face. I'm not convinced our roles in this ruse were entirely necessary. <laughs> I don't know. Conrad seemed quite taken with you. Mummy, I'm scared. Oh, I'm ruined. Good news, Sid. Both Conrad and Natalie have somewhat gracefully accepted their new roles. With time, they may even learn to. Time no longer appears to be the luxury it was before lunch. I take it your scouts found the bandits. Technically, it would be the bandits who found my scouts. It appears they march for Dalamil as we speak. All of them. What? You're not serious. They don't just want food, they want the whole damn town. I have a favor to ask. I'm told the bandits march in two groups, one from the south and one from the desert, in a move doubtless intended to stretch our already gossamer thin defenses. Very well. Jill and I will meet those from the desert. But what of the rest? The rest, my friend, the city shall fight. Together. The stakes, I concede, are high. But if this does not unite Dalamil, Nothing will. That is a lot of faith to put into those who had their hands around each other's throats but a moment ago. Then it will be for us to see that their hands are kept occupied. And I do mean us. I thought you might say that. We'll hold them off for as long as we can. And we will do the same. <laughs> the women folk have come to fuck us. I'll take that one. It's all yours. And your mother! <laughs> <laughs> Somersault, fire. It's the Celtics. I'll show you to break my stagger. Hungry bandits. The townspeople. Could they have held out? I don't hear any fighting. 
What do you think? That we should hurry. Natalie, I owe you an apology. You did well out there. The inn would have been lost had you not held the line. Without you, there would have been no line to hold. You saved us, Conrad. You saved Alamil. We all saved Alamil. Conrad seems to have had a change of heart. I'd say they both have. I take it from your presence that our visitors from the desert won't be joining us either. Pity. The plan worked, Sid. Granted, it only took an army of bloodthirsty bandits at our gate. Calm now, Victor. Why quibble over the details? We are united, and that is all that matters. As for you, Sid, you fight considerably better than you act. I'll take that as a compliment. To Martha's rest. attacked us out of the blue and there's no telling when they might be back you best keep that sword handy said this man's gonna die if we don't get him to a healer i'm not a healer so see you later martha it's good to see you and you clive jill otto said you've been attacked by a kashik what exactly happened here those skies are what happened. Not long after they fell dark, we had our first visit. There were hundreds of them. Tried to storm the hill. Only a handful made it up here, but that was more than enough. The rest are still down there now. And while we have a few willing fighters holding them back, they're sorely outnumbered. What do you think, Clive? That we join the fight. I thought you'd never offer. Now, where I need you is the Fallen Gate. That's where the fighting is fiercest. Let the men know you've come to help. Something tells me they'll be pleased to see you. We're on our way. Do you think there were as many as Martha says? <laughs> More. I need to refill my potion. Oh, do you? Thanks very much. You don't think they've abandoned us? Arcades we've set up around the town won't hold the Akashic back for long. Goodbye, a few moments to say our last farewell. <sighs> Clive. Wounded. We deal with the Akashic first. It's 
an Akashic Pistol. These men don't have the look of hired swords. If you've come to rob this place... You are mistaken, my Lord Rosfield. We're here by Madame Martha's leave. How do you know my name? Who are you? Forgive me, my Lord. There wasn't time for introductions. We're with the Guardians of the Flame. Wade's men? But how did you come to be here? Where is your commander? So Wade left earlier with a scouting party to find out where the Akashic were coming from. <laughs> I am the knight. I'm Take your man. wounded back to the inn. Martha will see you're looked after. We'll join you anon. And to think you took them for thieves. A fine reward for holding off the horde, that is. When did Wade and his men arrive? Not long after Rosalith fell. The Guardians asked me to shelter some of them that had lost their homes. They were making ready to leave just as the skies turned, and we agreed it was best we stuck together. Mother! Trouble! The scouting party's almost at the lift, but they got a pack of Akashic snapping at their heels! And they got wounded with them! They're not gonna make it! Damn it all! We'll worry about them, Martha. You look after everyone here. If any can still fight, send them to the lift. I will. You two be safe now. Descend the lift. Squire, I need you to get those who can still walk up the lift to Martha's. But what about... I didn't ask, Oscar. Sir. Sir Wade. Lord Rossfield. If you aren't a sight for sore eyes. Martha seemed to think you might need some help. And by the looks of it... We thought we could sneak by them. But we didn't know there would be so many. How could we have? I don't think, I mean, Odin's peeps, as you put it, they're not the Behind only people you. screwing around here. Like, the Akashic are just attacking. Damn it. We need to get the injured to safety. Do you think we can hold them off? We can certainly try. Are you with us, Sir Wade? Always. Then let's do our duty. Let's beam them! Thank <laughs> you. 
beam! Even a level yet. Is anyone hurt? I don't think so. And yet again, you've pulled me from the flames. It's just a pity I keep walking into them. <laughs> you've never been one to shy away from danger, Sir Wade. Like any shield worthy of the name. I see you're all in one piece. Martha! Is something wrong? The lookout saw smoke coming from down Eastpool Way. Too thick to be a hearth. A second horde? Feel like finishing the job? Always. Jill and I will make for Eastpool. You'll need to move the injured without us. Don't you worry about them. The moment my men are safe, I'll follow. Good luck. Right in that thing again. Just warp up. Ew, the Flash is gonna be the first new movie released to debut on the NFT blockchain. What in the hell? Sorry, I'm just getting some news updates. That looks awful. Uh, just patch me up as quick as you can. Yeah, I just sent a reply. Ew. They're headed for the rest. We have to slow them down. Martha and the others won't be ready. They don't like being comboed. Jeez, my lord. Did I miss anything? Only the first round, so wait. Shall we? Yeah, the main two characters, more experience. The only, uh, some of the only dominance left in the whole land. T 
Do you see any more? No. I think that was the last of them. But it won't be long before the next lot arrive. Then we make for Martha's while we can. They're just not available. Yeah. What did you find out there? The same as Sir Wade. Scores of Akashic. Well, wherever they came from, they're gone now. Our lookouts say the lowlands are clear. Hopefully we'll have enough time to lick our wounds. How many of your men were injured? A damn sight less than if you hadn't turned up. Thank you. It was a hard-fought victory. But as long as the skies remain dark, I fear the Akashic's numbers are only going to rise. It's not a matter of if the Horde will be back, but when. And whether that's sooner or later, we'll need to be ready. The inn here affords a good view of the land, and is easily defendable. I'd like to make this one of our outposts. What do you say, Martha? You'd have more men to guard the rest. Well, when you put it like that, of course they can stay. Quest complete. Guardian scarf? My lord, there's someone I'd like you to meet. Jill's right there. Oscar, over here. It is an honor to make your acquaintance, Lord Rossfield. I am Oscar. Oscar of House Murdoch. Murdoch? I wasn't aware the Lord Commander had children. Oh, he didn't. But his brother, my father, did. I am Sir Rodney's nephew. Oh, <laughs> so sorry about that family. Well, go on then. It's not for me to ask him. Yes, Sir Wade. If it please you, my Lord Marquis, might you take me as your squire? I would learn the duties of a shield from the finest. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Oscar, but I am a shield no longer. Nor was I ever If a you're finest. still alive, you're one of the only and best spending ones. time in the company of an outlaw hardly seems a fitting education for one aspiring to take his oaths. My Aunt Hannah once told me that a man is not defined by his title, but what he does in its name. You have accomplished much since taking on the mantle of Sid, winning no little honor in so doing. And I would sooner serve under an honorable outlaw than an unworthy sheep. Not that so Wade and the other guardians are... They are. I mean to say that, uh, the... It's all right. We know what you mean. There is only so much the boy can learn from me, my lord. But a squire. Would that really be so bad? You were a squire once. And I'm certain Sir Rodney would approve. <sighs> know that I'll show you as much leniency as your uncle showed me. I would not have it any other way. I will not let you down, Lord Rossfield. You or my uncle. We shall be staying here for the time being, and not just for the ale. I'll have one of my men escort Oscar to Benemir once he's said his farewells. It's a quick save. We did get a lot done. Still not a level, but... Here we go! First we find Isabel. Heard a bloke saying he saw ghosts on the far side. I saw it with my own eyes. Did you die, Bob? Yeah. I saw it. Over. Lord. 
lady. We received the dame's message. There have been sightings of strange creatures, I understand. Are they zombies? With the blue eyes. Oh, okay. Yes. Like a kashik, but different. They've taken so many. I've lost count. A kashik, but different. <sighs> Ultimus thralls. And what of your mistress? Is she here? Oh, no. She went to the garrison to ask what they were planning on doing about all this. Then we'll look for her there. Madame, please! Half the garrison's been slaughtered by those things. We lost the captain this very morning. We've tried requesting reinforcements, but there's been no word from the capital or the Dominion. That's not our fault. Days. We were just there. What more would you have us do? I would have you do your duty. Those at the Vale look to me for protection. And protect them I shall, because they are my charges and that is my duty. In case you have forgotten, the people of this town are your charges. But more than that, they are your people. Your sisters, your brothers, your lovers. So you have a choice. Lay down your sword and watch as they are slaughtered. Or take it up and do what is right. She speaks the truth, you know. This here, it's all we have. It's all that's left. What we have left is our lives. Yeah, look at that castle in the back there with no they crystal. They really want us to lose them as well. Not if we don't ask to. Look, there's a cask under the captain's bunk. Let's talk about this over a drink, eh? I'm listening. I'll have a word with him. Oh, Clive. I didn't expect help to arrive so quickly. And thought to take matters into my own hands. It was a noble effort. But I thought you might still need some support. I'd like you to consider my needs. Um, <clears throat> what we need oh, yeah, to consider the first time Jill's been in the, the is where vicinity. the creatures came from. The way the survivors speak of them, one would think they appeared out of thin air. They do. <laughs> and perhaps they did. It's hard to know what to believe these days. Hmm. We'll talk to the survivors. You're a pikeman, yes? What happened? I've got family and more. I heard the flood was spreading, so... I went to see if they were all right. And a pack of them glowing... ...things found me in the meadow. I ran for my life. I... I never did get to the village. Leave that to us. But my family... Still in the capital. It's all right. Here you are. Did you see the creatures that attacked you? Creatures? Uh, yeah, I. They came out of nowhere. They went for Joseph first, then me, and then. Then they were just gone. Do you remember where you were? On the road from Oriflam. We just passed more when... When... Where's my Joseph? It's all right. Just rest now. At least we have an idea of where the thralls might be now. We should head for more. Good to see the turtle can keep up with a 
talk about. I've been missing crystal. Yeah, it just looks like a regular old place now. It's a lich! Do you think there are more? There are always more. But I'd say we've done what we can for the time being. Then we should let Isabel know. Just gonna fast warp it. You have the town's thanks. Don't thank us yet. There will be more. Many more. And you'll need to be ready for them. Oh, we shall. Isn't that right, Captain? Yes, my lady. The garrison will be ready. Philippe here has convinced most of the men to remain at their posts. For now, at least. Okay, he is gonna get that Hearing movie. that the Dane would look kindly on any man who committed himself to the task certainly didn't hurt. Nah, it's not the most selfless of motives, I'll admit. But whatever it takes, eh? Now me, I never needed convincing. I became a soldier to protect the people I love. And the people I love include the ones standing before me. <laughs> Handsome and chivalrous. Uh-oh. Clive, uh, walk away. If you don't mind, I have sentries to post. 
milady. Lest you wonder, I'm not foolish enough to believe that this has solved all of my problems. But it has solved one, and that's one fewer than I had this morning. Thank you again, Clive. Friends seem to have things under control. For now, at least. Let's go and put Otto's mind at rest. price than that. Is that all? Did you see the pair that got hauled into time? The, the guard and league have put a, aside their differences for the time being, allowing us to all leave to sip our snake pit and indulge with leisure. For that, I would hazard, we have your better half to thank. She put on quite a performance. As for yours, well, from one aspiring investment to another, I might as well just working on your delivery, and your projection, and those stiff limbs of yours, and your countenance, and, well, everything else. We wouldn't want to do the name Underhill to service now, would we? The Guardians are getting along with the Axis fine enough, working to shore up the rest's walls when not clearing out what few threats remain down the reeds. Though, chances are we'd still be neck deep in Kakashic if you hadn't given the Horde that f your firm but gentle nudge. I know you've a romp to save and all, but if you ever need need of a quick reviver, come see us and we'll tap you a cask. You have an uncanny time of showing up where you're most needed, my lord. Without your steel, I fear the rest would be in the hands of the Akashic, and us but more than their m m more of their nameless numbers. However, with the horde now both thinned and fractured, we guardians can focus our efforts on putting down their smaller packs without the worry of being overwhelmed. While Martha's blood axes can return to defending the Tor. As for young Oscar, you will forgive my sudden request to take him under your wing. He's a good man, attentive, polite, hardworking. So, as you can see, he already has earned, learned everything he can from me. He would do well to continue his squiring under a more worthy shield, and the realm has none more worthy than you. Yeah, the town's thanks for having us rid of the thralls, but we are neither of us no, so naive to think we can see, we have seen the end of their like. Good Philippe has taken to seeing that we are prepared should the ghouls come calling once again calling. But I oft worry the rank of captain has begun to weigh heavily on his shoulders. Just as I imagined the weight of might be a set of you and your burdens. But remember, should the weight ever become too much, you need to stand alone. Our hearts and arms remain ever open, as do the Vale's doors. to S ranks. Welcome to the Patron's Whisper. It's not true. The world can't be ending, can it? We were struggling before the skies went dark, but now I can't imagine how we will, we will bear it all. We've lost so much already. When will it be enough? The world end, won't it, Clive? Come to claim your just desserts. Hugo's men are gone, with them the fear in our hearts. Once more shall the heart markets echo with mirth and merriment, and it is you who we have been thank. You earned this. Come again. I may have more for ya. Fancy a look at the list, do you? I don't mean to be gloomy. The whole world's gone to shit. They need all the help they more. can get. You watch yourself out there, all right? wondering when you turn up allows from all our friends thanking you for your timely intervention how is it you always manage to arrive at just the right moment 
Luck, I suppose. Any word on the rest of the realm? Hmm, let's see. Storm's still crying out for Mother Crystals. The nations are still in chaos. And the skies are still the color of a kick in the kidneys two days on. So... Right. Clive, we knew this was gonna happen. Well, not the bleeding skies part. But you take my point. Now's not the time to second guess yourself. Now's the time to visit the infirmary. Taya says your brother's awake. Thank you, Otto. Yeah, we didn't expect Ultima to be such a jerk. A loser, if you will. So it was not Sylvester, but Olivier who served as Ultima's puppet. And when Dion learned of this, he sought to slay the fiend. Son of Sylvester and Annabelle Lesage, thanks in large part to Mother's machinations, Olivier was appointed Emperor of the Holy Emperor Empire of Sandbreck, a fact that triggered his half-brother Prince Dion to launch a coup against him. It was Olivier's sinister goading that drove Dion into madness and led to his own demise. Pierced through the heart by Dion's spear, as the boy died, the body, his body crumbled to dust, proof that he had become naught but another puppet of Ultima. Only for his father to take the spear that would have freed him. Enough to drive a man to madness. Small wonder he hasn't stirred. I would be afraid to wake. Had I but reached out to him sooner, warned him of the threat Ultima posed. But now, both an empire and her prince lie broken. We have a lot to talk about, you know. Joshua. What do you know of Ultima? Very little, I'm afraid. Despite my best efforts. Eighteen years ago, as I lay buried beneath the rubble of Phoenix Gate, it was not death who came for me, but another. And it was while in my rescuer's care I first heard of Ultima. I've been chasing his shadow ever since. Ultima is driven by some deep, dark purpose, and for whatever reason, it would seem you are crucial to his designs. He will stop at nothing to have you, even if that means toppling an empire. But why me? What possible use could I be to such a creature? I don't know. That is one of many answers that have eluded me. Yet, I am certain of this. It is not mere chance. You were chosen for a reason. All dominants carry within them the might of an icon. Nigh limitless power that is at once acutely limited. I wield fire, and only fire. And I only ice. Eight wardens for eight elements. You, Clive. Yeah, what the hell, Clive? Cheating jerk. You are different. You are special. Your abilities begin with the flames of Ifrit. But they do not end there. The fact Ifrit can even exist goes against everything we thought we knew of dominance. Perhaps Ultima has been waiting for one such as you, whose potential is truly limitless. I've encountered that thing several times now. If it or he, as you say, needs me, why hasn't he claimed me as he did the boy? Were I to hazard a guess, I'd say the two of you are somehow incompatible. His mind's not properly attuned to your body. His mind? Mind, awareness, spirit, call it what you wish. But I believe Ultima to be an embodiment of the concept. It is why I struggle and fail to contain him here inside me. Sorry, inside you. With every setting sun, I feel my strength wane. 
And though the Phoenix's flames mend the prison I have made for Ultima, they do so at a cost. We must find a means to bring an end to him before I meet my own. What were you thinking? It was that or let him take Clive. And I've always had a soft spot for my brother. But that doesn't mean you should sacrifice yourself to save me. <coughs> Joshua. <coughs> Clive, it's Gav. It's more than that. People coughing blood over here. There's an army of Akashic at the gates of Canver. <laughs> well, like, we have these beings who just manifest mana, right? Or magic. Well, what's the short of it? It's all tired, told you. The capital of the free cities is under siege by an army of monstrosities. The city guard are doing their best to stem the tide, but numbers ain't on their side. What of Lord Byron and Mid? Were they able to escape? No. Well, they're all right for now. They're hiding with Gav at midship. We have to get them out of there. Mm. And we shall. Otto, prepare a stolas. Tell Gab to stay exactly where he is. Understood. Vivian, what's the swiftest route to the free cities? <laughs> that sounds like a question for the map. Look here. This road, through Tabor, should provide the least trouble. Good. What a coincidence. Tabor is exactly where I'm bound. Joshua, bed is where you should be bound. You don't think I told him the exact same thing? Were Taya not such a talented healer, I would surely have been inclined to agree. But, thanks to her ministrations, I feel I may safely rejoin my attendant, who was to wait for me in Tabor if we became separate. All right, we travel together. Clive! If he stays close to me, he'll be fine. Thank you. Side quests! They appear! My attendant was with me in the Dominion before I primed. She would have watched the battle unfold and witnessed its outcome. I trust you'll be waiting for me in Tabor, where I can finally introduce you. Taya's right. Your brother is in no condition to travel. But that's all I'll say on the matter. It's Mid, Gav, and your uncle we should be thinking about now. Moogle has something to say! That's a new one. The pack. We've got like three side quests though. We gotta get ready on. With three people, I might have an advantage against the S rank. We'll see. It seems the hideaway is oh, blasted book. Appetite. Can you believe? Here, you put me in this situation, Clive. You can bloody well get me out of it. I need a hand with a recipe. Are you sure it's me you're looking for? I'm not much of a cook. I'm all the cook will be needing. Thank you very much. What I want from you is a little of your time, right? Oh, and uh, perhaps your sword. You remember Ivan Stew, right? Well, despite the look of the thing, and that awful stench, people wolf it down. So I thought I'd try making one of these supposed masterpieces myself. Had a peek at the book and gave it a go, but, well... It wasn't as straightforward as you'd hoped. Ivan had the same problem. Yeah, but this is my blooming kitchen, and I will not be outdone. So if you don't want to be seen as playing favorites, I suggest you lend me a hand. I've never been one to play favorites, Molly. And I would be only too happy to lend you a hand. So, 
What's on the menu this time? A fried mortress of Skyworm. That's one heck of a name, innit? Recipe seemed easy enough to an old hand like myself. Thought I'd followed it to a tea. Only, turns out Skyworm livers and Drake's mint are not what I thought they were. At least I hope they're not, given the rancid mess they made. Yvonne said the recipes in the culinary pilgrimage date back centuries. Used to say the ingredients even exist anymore. Wow. That kid in the background just eyeing those. a question for a scholar, right? wouldn't you say? Perhaps you know of one? Kindly old fella who wants the shelves, maybe? Fine. I'll go and speak to Harpocrates. Perhaps he'll know something. And if he does, I'll see if I can find your ingredients for you. You do that. Lest we forget, you've got a reputation to uphold. Sid! Look what the curse breakers brought back from Dalmechia! Said they were all the rage in Dalamil. Looks sort of funny if you ask me. <laughs> I'll be damned. Have you had one before? Something smells good. What are we having? Thumbs! And they are good. You should try one. Hey, the bloody guy hole in it. Who are the rest? <laughs> it's supposed to be hollow, silly. Haven't you ever seen Drake's Fang? I guess this scene wouldn't have happened if you if you didn't do that side quest. That's kind of interesting. It's appetite. Can you blame them with the spice? Norseman Harpocrates. I've come to pick your brain if you don't mind. It's about the book you lent Ivan. Ah, Valicia, a culinary pilgrimage, a classic. One of my favorites, in fact. The young man did a wonderful job with the Chancellor's stew. I do hope we shall be able to sample more such marvels in due course. That's actually why I'm here. I don't suppose you know where I might find Skyworm livers and Drake's mint. So the fabled San Briquois delicacy is next on the menu. Delightful. The descriptions of fried mortress never fail to make my mouth water. <sighs> now, <laughs> Skyworm is a somewhat antiquated name for the Wyvern, their ground livers being the paste from which the mortress is made. Dragon livers. Uh, how very San Briquois. One would have thought the disciples of Bahamut would have a touch more reverence for their icon's brethren, but apparently not. I believe the specific dragon the recipe demands is the blueback wyvern, said to be the very color of the sea beside which it resides. So we know where to look for our liver. But what about the drake's mint? Saint's bonnet, in contemporary parlance. A herb which grows along the North Reach coast. I gather that one can locate the cheerful yellow flowers by their heady scent alone, so I'm sure you'll have no trouble finding them. I may add eat that even people once wires. believed game was best served with the flora that sustained it in life. In which regard, fried mortress of Skyworm is undoubtedly a typical dish of the time. Meaning that if I find one, I find the other. To Northreach, then. Best of luck, Clive. And do save me a bite once the dish is complete. <laughs> Gotta go here first to start the quest, because it won't let me walk anywhere else. Dagger. 
It's like a dream. The four of us out walking like we used to. Enjoying this, are you? Gav and the others could be in danger as we speak. You're right. I'm sorry. Yote is a fine scout. If Candle was attacked, she will already have begun gathering information. Tabor isn't far. We should pick up the pace. Oh, it is straight down the middle here. We're not going to do that quest just yet. Time to do this quest, there and then I'll the sign off for the crazy. evening and the week. Uh, we've definitely overcome the bit where the the line where it's uh, very political fantasy to fantasy. It's all about the magic and summons and the icons. He said I should be able to find what I'm looking for somewhere nearby. Bright blue dragons and bright yellow flowers. Should be easy enough to spot. Well, bright blue dragons. This must be our way then. Alright. Let's get this over with. Liver. Uh, some naturalists believe that it is the blueback wyvern's proclivity to feed on carrion that results in their livers becoming so engorged that the saints' bonnets, which they follow their meals, serve to ameliorate the, this effect. Others claim that it is the blooms themselves which cause the damage, the wyverns being so taken with the flower's taste that they cannot resist. That's the wyvern's liver. Now I just need to find the herbs. Dry yellow with a heady scent. I think that's everything Molly needs to resurrect her recipe. Better head back. So many side quests! Worth the experience! Mindless though they are, an Akashic horde large enough to besiege the free cities is not to be trifled with. We must proceed with caution. Seems the hideaway has lost its appetite. So, did you have that word with Tomes then? I did, and he was as helpful as ever. He told me exactly where to look, in fact. Take a piss! And what precisely will I be cooking up? Or is it better not to know? Blueback wyvern liver. And, uh, a herb known as Saint's Bonnet. Ah, wyvern livers, was it? Well, at least it weren't actual worms, I suppose. Now then, you stay right where you are. I've got some cooking to do. Let's hope these grand old chefs of yore knew what they were on about. A 
And here we have it. Fried Mortress of Skyworm. Ivan's offered to make sure it's fit for consumption. Well, I say offered. He as good as begged. And rightly so. Is there any higher honor than partaking in a slice of culinary history? No animation for eating it, huh? <coughs> We're not exactly Final Fantasy 15, I see. So, not fit for consumption then. What? What witchery is this? The crackle of the crust gives way to an almost violent richness. Yet, it is the piquant kiss of the saint's bonnet that tames this savage dish. It is a tour de force, a force of nature even, a maelstrom of flavor and sensation, a graceful beast emerging from centuries of slumber. I think he likes it. Well, I can't quite tell with all that nonsense he's talking. But I reckon you might be right. It was decent then, I take it. Decent? It's remarkable. And I defy any man to say a word to the contrary. Sid, might I suggest that you command a party of your finest men and women to procure a dozen blue bat wyverns forthwith? I'll give it some thought. Might be worth your while. Okay, that's a level. That book may be a veritable treasure trove, but the recipes are hardly what I'd call honest fare. Oh, who needs honesty when they can have majesty? Our companions deserve only the very best. I do like the idea that no matter what, like even if this is like a bandit's hideout, like it has the best food in the whole country. Would it be thunder? Sid, perhaps you can help me solve a mystery. I can certainly try. Who's gone missing this time? It's not who, but what. Mid scales. The ones she made for her workshop. I borrowed them to teach the little ones about weight, and shortly after the lesson, well, they vanished. My first thought was that they'd taken them off somewhere I to play, but when I asked, they movie. swore they had nothing to do with their having disappeared. Which almost certainly means they had everything to do with it. Perhaps a visit from Sid will jog their memories. <laughs> I think it just might. Thank you. I don't like to imagine that my pupils would lie to me. But if they have, I'll have no choice but to discipline them accordingly. They were in the atrium when I last saw them, as always. Entirely. Oh, there's so many side quests here. I heard the emperor was impaled from his How how would you hear about this rumor so fast? It just happened. We're all gonna die! You hear me? What do you reckon we should do? I say we should just tell Miss Shirley. You'll get us all striped. I'm telling you, I can fix them. I can see you. Sid! Out of your studies, I see. And what is that? It's not a set of scales, is it? No. Of course it isn't. Not anymore. Well, not anymore, it's not. Oh. Then just how long hasn't it been one? We're sorry. But we didn't break them. We dis... dismembered them. Just like Miss Mididol showed us. 
Miss Mididol. Why would she have you dismembering her creations? Because that's the only way to become a ninja near. Engineer. Miss Mididol said. Ninja. Best way to see how some it worked is to take it apart and put it back together again. Unless she's training them to be ninjas. Well, then your work is already half done. Carry on. Uh, about that. The taking apart was easy enough, but it's the putting back we can't work out. Speak for yourself. The heavy thing goes at the bottom. Then. Then. Um. You three need to learn to take responsibility for your actions. So let's have a look at these parts with fresh eyes, shall we? All right. Everything here was once part of Miss Mididol's scales. Every piece has its own role to play, and each is just as important as the others. If even one of them is missing, the scales won't work. So let's think about what those roles might be. You already know one of the pieces. The body. Its role is to support everything else. But what of the others? This is called the arm. Why do you suppose that is? It doesn't look much like an arm. You're right. It looks more like a wing. <gasps> like a chocobo wing! You've ridden a chocobo before, haven't you, Sid? Will you teach me to ride one one day? I'll think about it. Now, what do arms do? Hold things. So wait, maybe this arm holds things too? Good thinking. Uh, destroy these children. You're on the right track. The pans. These round parts are called the pans. You all know what a pan is, don't you? I do. Molly uses them in the kitchens to fry bangers. But these aren't for frying bangers, you idiot. They're for weighing stuff. But what if I wanted to weigh goots? I don't think you'd fit on that little thing. <laughs> Probably not. What are the chains for? Holding the pans up? Well spotted. Which means something must hold the chains up in turn. This tiny piece is what's called a cogwheel, or gear. Have you ever seen one before? I have. Miss Mididol's dungeon is full of them. Most are on the floor. She puts them in all her inventions. They spin round and round and round and round and... That's right. They're very useful when you want to make things move. Do you remember if there was anything on the scales that moved? I remember the arm moved when I tried weighing an apple. And then somebody ate it. Not my fault. You shouldn't have tried weighing it before lunch. We know what part's supposed to move and how it's supposed to move. So, let's put the pieces together first, see what doesn't move, and then stick the cogwheel to that. Not a bad idea. You see? It's not so difficult. So, now that we've taken stock of the parts and learned what they do, what do you think? I think we've got it. Then here's what we'll do. You tell me what goes where, and I'll put the scales together. Well, obviously you need to start with the body. All the other pieces fit onto it, don't they? And the arms go on the body, just like real arms. Or wings, if you're a chocobo. And then the arms hold the pans by the chains. Very good. Let's see if that works. There. Yeah. All finished. Yes! We did it! Well, with Sid's help. <laughs> oh, I just put the pieces together. It was you three engineers who showed me how. That's right. We miss Mididol's hairs. Her hairs? Yeah, hairs for the future. Hairs. She's showing us her secrets now, so we can help out the hideaway when we're older. What do you think, Sid? Are we almost ready? With a little more help from Miss Mididol and Miss Shirley, I'd say it won't be long at all. <laughs> you hear that? It won't be long. Until then, though, do try to be honest with Miss Shirley. Hey, look! We never used the cold 
wheel. You don't think Sid forgot about it, do you? Let's walk away. sure our Ultima's probably going to make an attack on our base here at some point in the story. There's a storm coming, Sid. Will there be? Well, did you solve the mystery? It was as you thought. The children had the scales, or the parts of them at least. They dismantled them to see how they worked. Oh, no, Mid will have my head. Thankfully she won't. This might even have been her idea. Although I was the one who ended up teaching the lesson. I'm so sorry, Sid. I know how busy you are. I shall see that the children are properly punished. With whippings. Please, there's no need. Mid seems to have taken the three of them under her wing. She's even calling them her heirs. She'd have them follow in her footsteps. Whippings. Whippings for all three. Their fathers. I see. Sid. Do you know why Mid has been spending so much time at the hideaway of late? She told me it was because her studies had been interrupted by events in Canva. Is that not true? No, it isn't. The university offered her a commission. In exchange for full tuition, room and board, they asked her to oversee the design of several new war engines. To anyone else it would be an opportunity, but to Mid, who lost both her parents to war. It was a bitter pill, one she was none too keen to swallow. But that should come as no surprise. She's only ever cared about bringing people hope. The very last thing war can be said to do. Which explains her heirs. She's working to give them a better life. And so should I. What's the odd engineering lesson? Ah, oh, you've given them far more than that. And I'm sure they're very grateful. They had gill bugs on them? Those kids need more whippings than I thought. Seems the hideaway is lost us. What am I gonna do? I reckon these guys are enough to give anyone the collie, collie wobbles, but I'm not gonna sit around hanging my head and twiddling my thumbs. Did enough, back that, back, did enough of that back in Twinside while you were busy finding that horrible dragon and then there's that horribler one. But no more. From now on, I'm going to do what you lot do and probably pull my finger out no matter how much my knees are shocked. Not. <laughs> Can't have Nan and Blackthorn thinking I'm a big, great big wet blanket now, can I? Is everything all right, Goots? You seem more discomposed than usual. Oh, I don't know what that means, but, but I'm in a bit of a muddle. I think Nan might be in trouble, and she's... <laughs> it's all right. You can tell me. <sighs> there was a trader came by. One of our usuals, like... Said he'd heard some rotten rumours about her down Dallymill Way. Folk are saying she's been selling to bandits and cutthroats and that. I mean, she's fond of a chance to make a coin or two, aye, but... But she'd never do business with baddies. Especially not the kind who go hurting people who haven't done out. I wanted to ask her about it myself, but... Well, I'm scared she'll give us a tongue lashing. She'd never give your tongue a lashing, though, would she? Don't worry. I'll speak to her. Oh, thanks, Clive. You'll let me know what she says, won't you? Of course. I'm sure it's all just a misunderstanding.
Lady Karen. How's business? Not nearly as foul as the weather. You're doing good trade then? Both in and out of the hideaway? Hmm. Can't complain. Wait. What exactly are you getting at? Not once in five long years do you pay my affairs half a care. But here you are today, raking me over the coals like a bloody popotto. I guess popottos are a thing here too. asking. Out of interest. All right. I'm here because I was told that certain rumors have been circulating. About you selling weapons to brigands. Oh, are ah, you? Yeah. And who was it who knows me so well as to tell tales of my evil exploits? I, I, I didn't exactly hear firsthand. All I know is that someone in Dalamil has been spreading word to that effect. And what? You believe it? You think I'm profiting off the blood of innocence, do you? Look. I've done things I'm not proud of. Might be there were a time when I turned a blind eye to the wretchedness of the world so I could line my pocket. But that woman is no more. And you'd know that if you'd ever paid the slightest bit of notice. You're right, Lady Karen. I apologize. It was wrong of me to doubt you. No, it was. No. I reckon you've got better things to do than pointing your do-gooding finger at a poor old woman. Of course. Good day. I spoke with Lady Karen. What did she say? That the rumors were unfounded. And that I was a fool for thinking they might hold any truth. Along with some other things that made her feelings clear. And while it sounds like she may have done things she regretted in her past, she says those days are behind her. Oh, well, that's good. I knew Nan wasn't caught up in out bad. But why would people say she was? What did she ever do to them? It's not right. No, it's not. But people do things for all sorts of reasons. Perhaps we'll never know. Well, I'm going to find out. That trader, he said they were all talking about her in Dalimil. So that's where I'm going. I'll find someone who'll tell me, you'll see. Are you sure that's wise? Whoever's spreading these rumors means Karen ill. Oh, right. But that's why you'll be coming with me, isn't it, Clive? <sighs> I suppose it is. The bandits may be known, but look what they've left us. It shouldn't be too hard to find goods. The gentlemen of the town guard are stuck. Box! Could be I know something more. What's it worth to you? Uh, uh, Clive! Listen! I found someone who says he's heard the rumors about Nan. No, you? Me. Go on. Tell him what you told me. All right. It's like I said. A wizened old crone by the name of Karen's been selling steel to whoever will pay her price, be they knight or knave. Says the more swords and spears she puts in people's hands, the more war they'll wage. And the more war being waged, the more call for swords and spears. And who will they all turn to to keep them in steel? Why, the good reaper herself. 
And you've seen this Reaper at work? Aye, it just so happens I have. You'll find her right here, plying her trade most days. That's weird. She's here in never Delamere. really left our base. Where exactly? She has a stall here in the market, but if you're not the patient type, you can probably find her at her storehouse on the edge of town. But it'd be a bolder man than me that braved that particular nest of vipers. Feeling bold, traveler? I hope so, for your sake. Now, if that's all, I have places to be. Sorry to have kept you. You don't think Nan's the Reaper, do you? Well, unless she's discovered the secret of how to be in two places at once. Eh? What do you mean? Good. Lady Karen hasn't left the hideaway in weeks. So who has been running this stall he spoke of? Good question. I'll go and have a look. And I'll visit this storehouse on the edge of town. All right, but be careful, Clive. You too, Goots. The gentleman of the town guard was stuck. Mummy. What a mess. Very bravely. The safety of the town is in our hands. Time to brave the viper's nest. Time for violence. Just you, is it? Hmm. I thought I might have laid it on a bit thick. I'm gonna cut you, Jaro. It was a fairly unconvincing tale. So, what now? That's up to you. Die a slow death, or a quick one. Boys, he's all yours. But that sword is mine. <laughs> beam over there. in the back. Two beams. <laughs> it's like, oh, 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 beams? Nah, I'm out of here. Too, too rich for my blood. Oh, you've done it now. Go on. Tell me what I've done. When the Borgwin finds out you've killed his men, he'll have your head. He only wanted that 
bull of a manservant, the dim one always clinging to Karen's skirts. You weren't even supposed to be here. Who the hell are you anyway? What were you going to do to him? The Borgwin wanted him to get to Karen. I was only supposed to point the lump in the right direction once he arrived in Dalamil. Kick him. Then you turned up. Well, go on then. If you're going to end me, end me. Do it. You're not worth the effort. Now be gone. Before I change my mind. <laughs> Fucking coward! I need to find goods. Right now. Get your filthy paws off me, you naughty painted lout! Stop calling me names! And stop spreading them honorable lies about Nan! <laughs> well, that will be easy enough. For they are not lies. Every last word is true. And she must pay for her crimes in blood! Blood! Goose, are you all right? <laughs> He... He's gonna kill Nan! He said she had to pay in blood! After what she did, it is only right. She ruined my life and the lives of countless others. That loathsome harpy's very existence is a crime, and I will not allow it to continue. Goots, was it? I have no quarrel with you. Only with your employer. Run along now. You need not pay for her. I see how I say, like, uh, can I just no. kill him? No! No. I don't care what she did. I won't let you hurt Nan. Promise me you won't hurt her. Or I'll. Or I'll. Or I'll kill you myself! Goose, no. Enough, all of you! But how did you? <laughs> You're a sight less clever than you think you are, the pair of you. Did you think I wouldn't notice the two of you slinking off together? Well, the whole thing got me thinking. Who in Dalamil might bear me a grudge? And a certain snivelling shit I ran afoul of in my fairy years came to mind. Though it was just Bogam back then, wasn't it? I thought the years might have taught you some sense, but I see you're the same pants pissing craving you've always been. What was it we called you? Wet legs. You. You. Bitch. Everything that happened. It was all your fault. He's got a knife. And now you'll finally pay for what you did to me. Yep. If you want a piece of Nan, you'll have to go through me. Fuck. <gasps> you great galoot. Out of the way, I can handle this myself. So, wet legs, you remember what you told me when we last met? An eye for an eye. She's got a nose! words up. Wise words. And now is time to collect. No, I got no! What happened? Sorry to keep you waiting. Is he... Dead? No. But I reckon he wishes he was. It's an easy going through life, one eye shot of a pair. She actually took an eye. After all, I should know. You don't mean it. He took your eye. Oh, don't tell me you didn't notice. Lost it to old wet legs back when we were working the same routes. Said I'd stolen from his strong box. I'd done nothing of the sort, mind. But that didn't stop him taking his little revenge. 
So I took some of my own. Sorry, lost everything. His coin, his clients. Always knew he'd be back one day to claim his due. But he crossed a line dragging poor Goots into this. He didn't hurt you, did he? No, Nan. Still got all my arms, see? Legs, too. <laughs> but... What if he comes back again? What if he does? First we take the other eye, then we work our way down. He'll learn his lesson soon enough. But something tells me the wet legs has learned it already. Right. Let's get you back to the hideaway. You've attracted quite enough attention already. Ta-ra, Clive! Remind me never to cross you, Karen. I didn't think she'd actually go for the eye, but she did. Nothing like a dish of cold vengeance to foul a gut. I'm sorry, Nan. I, I didn't mean to make things worse. I just thought I had to protect you. Like you've protected me. Aye. Well, someone had to. Your parents certainly didn't give a whit for your well-being. Reckon the both of us would be worse off if I'd not taken you on. You've always been me right eye, Goots. And I'd have you stay that way. So don't you dare go looking for trouble again. Oh, I will. If you ever need help, I'll do it again and again, and you can't stop me. Why, you big lump. Fine. Play the hero if it makes you happy. Thanks, Nan. I won't let you down. There's nothing he wouldn't do for you. That's as may be. But if he's ever to make his own way in life... He'll need to start looking out for himself as well. Till then, he'll need people to watch his back, just like you did in Dalamil. Don't think I didn't appreciate that. Yeah, of course. It's a glass eye. His family. Stop it. You make me one good eye, mister. Tether a glass eye, or it's just a dead eye. You any favors. A potion today will cost you the same as it did yesterday. Sensor packed with herbs and ambergris uh, can ward off everything from insects to the plague, protect a home from thieves and demons, and heal any number of ailments, all while bringing love and fortune. So you can read. Congratulations. And then the last quest Did you see the pair that would be in the letters. Me. I'm just going to read it and then I'll be done for today. I apologize for the sudden untoward gesture. Circumstances have forced me to seek immediate aid, and there is another to whom I may turn. Your most esteemed lord uncle has presented me with a task most vexing, and I fear I am wholly unable to perform to his vaulted expectations, namely due to the marked lack of martial aptitude on my part. To wit, I am but a manservant, not a mercenary. While I maintain the fitness ample to attend to the needs of a manor, to the attending of bandits and back alleys, I am sorely ill-equipped. If it please you, my lord, prithee, come to and see me at Martha's rest, where I shall proceed to explain my predicament in full. Rutherford? Wasn't that the name of my uncle's manservant? Why would he be at Martha's rest? Smooth like butler. Smooth like butler. Darn these puns. Check by the renown first, and then I'll be done for tonight. I'll try to get a stream up this weekend uh, uh, for chill, but 
all of tomorrow I'm playing a board game with some friends. It's gonna be a 24 hour, like a 12 hour thing. And then Sunday I'm gonna try and recover from that. Do you like being struck by thunderbolts from on high? Then don't let anything happen to mid. Yeah? How may I help you today, Clive? Come to claim your just desserts? Since I can remember, I'm certain about myself. Turn my back on the world for a handful of, folk, of silks and a heavy purse. But where has that left me? It is hard to keep joy in one's heart when all those around you are without. Something must change, and that change must start with me. Here you are. Oh, I am at that level. Cool. Best of luck out there, Sid. One. I guess the next crafting recipe will take part in that. Saved. All right, that's it for me, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you all had a great couple of hours with me. Uh, you have a great evening yourselves. Let's raid a friendly channel. Woo! Uh, it does look like Chowgar... Uh, er, Wow, uh, Chow Garden HQ is playing DC Universe Online. Captain Falco is playing Dave the Diver. Oh, I heard that was... I saw that on Steam. It's on It was on sale before. Let's raid Captain Falco. It's been a while. Alright, I'm going to hit the raid button and we'll move over in about 10 seconds. But I hope you all have a great evening, a safe a safe Friday, and a great weekend. I hope this, I hope to see you this weekend for a chill, week, uh, chill stream. But if I can't, I'll see you for sure on Monday at about 5.30 Eastern Standard Time for some more Final Fantasy 16. Thanks, Mabby, and thanks, Ty, for being here, and everybody else who's here for the stream. I hit the raid button. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe. Work on your backlogs. Don't let them haunt you like ghosts, because there's too many games out there. We need to get the ball rolling and playing them all. Uh, and stay cool out there. It's been Mike from GXP Streams. See you later.